Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. Leadership Hill. What is Leadership Hill? Leadership Hill is a concept of when a leader When he or she marches up the hill, maybe is at the top of the hill or before the top of the hill, and they're about to go into, for lack of better description, battle. They look over their shoulders, and they have to see two things in order to know if their leadership is having a positive effect. One, are people following them? And two, are they smiling? Now, that's a loaded, loaded thing to put on A leader, because I think employees have a huge responsibility in their development. I don't think leaders are fully in charge of employees' career development. Yet a leader has to lead his or her team. They have to provide strategy and guidance and instruction of where they need to go in order to meet performance requirements. At the same time, a leader has the responsibility of understanding one fundamental thing per employee, and that is what motivates them. See, I think we've got this wrong. I think we hire people, we onboard them, we train them, and the onboarding and training is specifically germane to the job. And then all of a sudden, the employee starts to think, I want more. Maybe I want a promotion. Maybe I want to do something different. And the employee is really open to trying new things. Yet the leader is steadfast on, we've got goals, we've got objectives to meet. And both are true. Both are okay yet they don't have to be mutually exclusive from one another. Let me explain. So let's say we have an employee who is doing a job for a year and they want to get promoted. We'll make it simple. And they want to get promoted and they want to go into a leadership program, maybe an emerging leader program, and they want to get to that point where they can really have an opportunity to go to the next level. Now, let's say there are two managers with identical situations like this. Manager A has no clue the employee wants this because they're just steadfast on making sure the team meets its objectives. Not a bad attribute, mind you. Manager B has the same conviction to hit the performance requirements, yet also knows that this employee wants to go there and has conversations around career development. Now, which of the two scenarios would have the more motivated, committed employee? Obviously, It's manager B. So what happens with Leadership Hill is, one, we have to find out if people are following us, are they engaged, are they marching up that hill, and are they smiling? Are they enjoying the journey? See, so often in the entrepreneurial world, we hear this concept all the time. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And I think the same can be true of employees. Employees tend to have this, for a lack of better description, this misguided notion, I'm going to join this company and they are responsible for training me. They are responsible for promoting me. They are responsible for career development opportunities. I don't think that's true. See, I think we have to get back to an employee where he or she looks in the mirror and says, here's where I'm at. Here's where I want to go. Here's what I'm willing to do on my own time to get there. Now, you combine that with a manager who understands that motivation and is a partner in that journey, you are going to have a highly committed workplace organization and culture. So when we onboard, we tend to onboard to the job. We need to onboard 
to behavioral expectations. We need to train to the job, yet also train to communicate upward and share goals, aspirations. That's hard because let's be candid. Most employees are not going to offer themselves up to a leader in fear of it might be used against them or they might be vulnerable. It might be out of alignment with what my leader is expecting. And if we react as leaders adversely, nobody will march up that hill with us. I want to share with you a very quick story of a leader that really had a tremendous amount of turnover. And he kept complaining about the hiring practice. And in the exit interviews, which I'm not a fan of, but the exit interviews were pretty clear. It was because of his management style. He was a dictator. He was rough on people. He he pushed people hard. And people just didn't like it. Now, whether that's fair or unfair, the people just left. Yet, he never looked in the mirror. So the only way a leader can go up that hill The only way they can go up that hill and look over that shoulder and be honest with themselves if they are highly self-aware. Most are not. Self-awareness is looking in the mirror and saying, it starts with me. What am I doing well? Where do I have opportunities to improve? And what am I going to do to get there? If a manager does not ask themselves those three questions, Before they point fingers, my suggestion is they lack self-awareness. Nothing can improve without self-awareness. You can't go up to someone and say, Bob, you have a crappy attitude. And he says, no, I don't. And he's going to have a really great career. And he's really going to move up the organizational chart. It's not going to happen. So when you are a leader and you're going up that hill, and it's more of a concept than anything, and you stop, ask yourself, do I know what motivates each one of my employees following me? Am I helping them get there? Are they smiling? See, we get very caught up in conditions like virtual and hybrid. You should still be able to have a conversation anywhere. You should still be able to ask the question, where do you want to end up? What can I do to help you? It's that simple. 41% of people today, according to the McKinsey organization, are going to leave or are actively seeking to leave their present organization due to a lack of career development. It is such a simple conversation. If you're intrigued, check out the link below this podcast for our Progress Coaching Career Conversation course. It is awesome. It teaches you how to have multiple conversations specific to career development. When you go through the course, you're going to learn how to go up that hill and know exactly that people are following you and smiling. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called Coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign seven to 21 day programs for employees to learn, and more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.